Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda. Desert princess thing? I didn't think of a good one for this part, sorry. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to say that was the first one. Oh. <laughs> hey, I, I'm... It, what, we're... We've got a lot of parts to go, alright? Not all of them are going to be winners. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me. <laughs> anyway, um, I... Telma, this is a bar. You're supposed to be serving drinks, not giant meat. I'd like a bar where we serve, where you guys serve nothing but tasty meat. Yeah, but do you want her to just like literally s drop an uncooked ham on you in front of you? It, yeah, it's like it's not even refrigerated. Depends if there's it's a barbecue. It's probably right salted to hell and gone, as was the medieval custom. Um, you know. Yeah, so you just like you know you're eating. You might as well just eat the rock. I actually, <laughs> at that point. I actually watched a video on the salting process for meat back in the day. It was quite interesting. Ooh, that's not, that does sound You see, annoying. that's, you know what, that's the kind of thing that I think I would watch before I want to go to bed, because it's interesting enough for me to be interested, but not so interesting that if I fell asleep, I'd feel bad. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this game attempts to have interesting characters at this point in the game, but unfortunately... Who just stand around and do nothing of value. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part, because their designs are cool. I think that yeah, this, girl this character really kind of cool. strikes me I as like, like one of those random adventurers you see wandering around in Breath of the Wild, where yeah. it's supposed to imply that there are other people having adventurous adventurers uh, in the background while you're having your own adventure, so maybe Link isn't so super special after all, but, you know, uh, doesn't really do much with it. Yeah, so uh, I feel like if they had done more with these people, because really... All that they all do is just, like, they're there, and they're looking at the same stuff you're looking at. That's well, neat, right? That, yeah. They don't help you in any way. I mean, oh, these... Oh, what the hell? It's, it's oh, Colin's dad. I forgot dad. about him. I like that Colin's dad is one of them, too. It's just... Yeah, that is really cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, even though I forgot about it, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, because he's also... He's established to be a swordsman and I, stuff I like, like that, that these so three are, like, gathered around a map on... On in a tavern table, which is like the stereotypical Dungeons and Dragons style adventurer party. All right, boys, where are we <laughs> dropping? Lake Hylia. Let's do this. In fact, that was like basically the original intro to Final Fantasy XIV, where there was a group of adventurers taking uh, le 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 th those those optional quests you can buy at taverns, um, and they were actually like big plastic cards with no words on them that the tavern. Uh, quest salesman person uh, handed to, to you in like a stack and you picked one. How do you even know what these things mean? I don't... They have like a, a, a mural <laughs> indicating the general type of quest on them and that's it. <laughs> but yeah, th th that's that's actually literally what people are doing in the world of Final Fantasy fourteen, Sitting at a tavern and pouring over those icon cards. I don't even... I... But yeah, it, it was... It was quite a high production CGI recreation of that meta concept, I'll say. So, I'm thinking about what would make these guys more interesting, and I'm thinking to kind of what they did in Wind Waker. Where... Yeah, I was about to bring that up. Where they have, where they like follow you into the dungeon that they're part of the thing in, yeah. and have, they have like some kind of ability that Link doesn't do. I would have loved that. Honestly. So maybe not necessarily in the dungeon, but at least because they kind of sort of help you into the dungeon a little bit, but in a really passive way. Like this guy just gives you the letter you need so you can shoot over. The other guy just reads a book that opens yeah. the door. So, but if they like, <laughs> like, for example, if this guy came with you and helped you fight the Boblins that are in the, um, that are, that we're going to come up with or whatever. And there was dialogue and character development and stuff. I forgot. That would have helped. I forgot you could go into a roll from a massive jump like that and just avoid the, the, the fall damage. Oh yeah, this is like one of the only Zelda games that lets you do that. So tall. Block <laughs> of time does that. You could just be Leon really? Kennedy. I I, yeah. I don't believe in yeah. ladders anymore. Oh, oh. I'm just gonna jump straight down this building, this whole tower, this village tower. I'm just gonna jump straight down. Um, well, Leon <laughs> Kennedy is also in a B action movie where anybody can do that. So you know, it's not well, that special. Well, for I mean, him. I mean, uh, one of your favorite games, Ted, does something like that where um. In Banjo Kazooie, and oh yeah, if, if you, you flap your wings right before landing on the ground, you're fine. <laughs> well, no, if you do the uh, backflip, you take no fall damage. Um, well, that one at least kind of makes sense oh, because really? if you hold, I didn't know that. If you hold the backflip button, then Kazooie will continue to flap her wings and you fall slower. 
So yeah. at least that one kind of makes sense. You Except know? Even, haven't it's even still kind of that, stupid. So. <laughs> Well, no, in Banjo Kazooie, if you like, uh, if you like, move or press another button and you start falling at the normal speed, you will take the fall damage when you land. But oh, okay. that's also a cartoon, a literally a cartoon game. So the the co- comedy physics also start yeah. to take. Effect I mean, at some some, point. some games like try to have their cake and eat it too by having an animation where you land really hard. I think Odyssey does this, where you land really hard but you don't actually take damage. Well, that's because the fall damage in Mario 64 always kind of felt weird because Mario's only superpower is jumping. So <laughs> landing from a high, high from a high place and taking damage just kind of goes against. It's not like really. if Superman. It, 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 it's all. It's also ridiculously easy to just not have that happen because you just press B or Z before you hit the ground and you're totally fine. Yeah, it's just you know fall damage does make sense in a game that isn't heavy on bottomless pits. Um, you know, it gives you a, I'll take you take a little damage because you missed a jump and maybe weren't thinking of using the the butt sl- butt slam before you landed. So for in Mario, it doesn't bother me because that's a more chill game anyway. So yeah. it's a it's a punishment in that you can't. Too. It's a punishment in that you can't move right away uh, enough. It's like especially when in a game where you can only take. <laughs> it's three a slap hits. in the wrist for sucking at the game. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, honestly that's all that's all the punishment you need. For, yeah, like, I know. Messing up Mario's like another that. one of those series that's just really comfy. The difficulty should really be there to to give you a reason to use your options rather than, you know, to put your put your face to the concrete and scrape your nose against it and make you feel bad for not knowing the game really well, or whatever. Yeah. What? Why did? It, why was that the image that popped in my head? I <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, it sometimes. made sense to me, so it works. Why are yeah, you touch touching my face? <laughs> <laughs> if I had emotion, if I had emotion, I would oh, tell no, you he, to stop. He just smiled, Lower. Ryan. Very, very slightly. It didn't actually emote about any of it. No, he, he's he, a, he, he went like from a robot serious to, to being. <laughs> he he enjoyed it. He he enjoyed the soft touch. Of I enjoy people. physical contact. Beep boop. Well, technically, <laughs> he is a robot because he's an artificial intelligence in a computer. So, yeah. Wait, what? Well, I mean. He's, he's, he's literally talk, he's in a video about game. <laughs> nah, that's, like, so, the, the, so the player is, character isn't an artificial intelligence. Maybe the mooks well, are, or no, the bosses. As far as we're aware. Like, no, I'm saying that like Link is literally just code. Like right, he doesn't yeah. actually exist. Kind of in the same way that like Ishmael is technically ink on a paper or something. Yeah, God I, damn I know it, what you're saying. Has... It's just you know AI was the wrong way to say that. Oh, I forgot about these things. This he is actually has. a pretty neat. Use of the, the wait. Claw are these shot, actually supposed to be B, BP hats? Yeah, those are B hats. They're they're the only. Wow. If they're not their own thing, then I'm pretty sure they're P hats. Although, if the if you were to actually try not threatening, if you were to actually try hanging off a chain like this for an extended period of time by one arm, you'd you get really tired pretty quick. Oh yeah, no. Link has to have really good grip. No, strength. your shoulder would be done. Yeah. Um. But I actually I like this version of Gerudo Desert. The music sucks. Yeah, the music is the music is awful. Like you know, it's not terrible. It's just boring. So. It's boring and it's abs- it's extremely low quality. There's like yeah two games I can think this of off the top of my head that the actual Gerudo theme on it. Uh, there's, well, there's like maybe. Uh, it's like two games I can think of off the top of my head that acknowledge like the amount of time you sort of the amount of time you could maybe hang off of a thing before falling off. One of them is good and one of them is bad. One of them is Tomb Raider the Angel of Darkness, which is a terrible fucking game. But uh the other one is like um Metal Gear Solid 2 where you can is strengthen in a really short period of time by doing pull-ups. <laughs> but the result of that is that some players, like myself, just spend a lot of time in the opening room of Raiden's section doing pull-ups until you're maxed out. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you gotta get. Hey, but you start the next cutscene with Anchor. You gotta, you gotta hilarious. get swole in order to stop Metal Gear. You know, it's just I do like... lots of sit-ups and push-ups and drink plenty of juice. Raiden, do you remember what day it is? Is it the day that I get really, really sick at the gym? Raiden, it's leg day. What's re- leg day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the things I use for cartwheel kicks? <laughs> oh, so now you see. Now I'm imagining the scene where he's covering his junk, and then you just can't see the rest of him because his biceps are so big. Yeah. I, I will say this is like one of those parts where, like the the yellow indicator that tells you when you're actually able to hook shot onto something, can really screw with people who don't understand how to aim at moving objects. 
You're better off uh, you ignore that uh, indicator and just aim in front of it. <laughs> you know. You can lock on. Can I don't know if it's target? helpful. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I feel like that would probably help you because it's moving fairly slow. I think it depends on how far away it is if you lock on. If it's pretty close, I think it's better. It, it would work if, if it's, it's close, farther yeah. away. If it's farther away, you actually are better off uh, targeting it yourself. But yeah. I'm also really anal about these kinds of things, and I don't trust the Z targeting in this super much. But that's kind of just me. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, my my initial reaction to anything is to use Z target, so like that's a little bit backwards from how I usually, uh, how I usually try to aim at things. Oh, here we go. I like waste a couple of a couple of shots and be like, well, I guess this isn't working now. Oh look. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that thing almost <laughs> snatched your damn. No, it, okay, <laughs> considering the worm thing and the dragonfly, I imagine like a really high pitched desk. The seeker has a awakened. <laughs> There's always a bigger bug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, Man. so Dune Princess. So yeah, now we don't have to speed up po hunting anymore because we can just get the rest on the way. Like half of them you find just in Hyrule Field or whatever. So it's very front loaded. It's not as bad once you get to the point where you can just collect them as you go. So. Okay, I I know how to. Oh no, that's the the that's the. I'm so used to it being. Hey, listen, that I forgot that that's actually the the cue for you to teleport that back to the bridge of Elden, which I don't think is ever technically required. You just, it's just a thing you can do to make backtracking easier and open up the cave of ordeals, which we which we're going to wait to do because normally uh, you're kind of expected to go in every time you get a new dungeon item to keep on going in deeper and then you unlock the uh, fairies at each individual fairy spring but you don't have to ever backtrack if you just wait until right before the final dungeon of the game to do it so it's right. a good thing midden is a jedi you know what she basically is a jedi now that i think about it she rides on your back she's really grumpy she can move large things with her mind she has a giant floating hand that comes out of her... Oh, wait, no. That's not Star Wars. <laughs> she talks about light side and dark side. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure Yoda has that. Uh, what, in episode 12? Maybe one of the extended universe books. Yeah, but is that canon anymore? No. I'm pretty sure this will work. That's not going to result... Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, volume 3. Yoda and the magical hand that comes out of my that, That's not no, going to result the biggest any, disappointment. Uh, the biggest disappointment about the non-canon stuff is that someone made a really good mock-up of a Keanu Reeves as Darth Revan. Wait, really? <laughs> I feel like repairing the bridge in this manner is going to result in some really bad uh, merchant caravan accidents in the near future. Oh, no, you see, they're really... Whatever, they're, Link doesn't care. They're really lucky that the bridge broke in such a way that it could just slide, slide in like that, because God forbid the cracks were going the other way, and then it would just fall normally. <laughs> so, you know... <laughs> We just put a crap ton of super glue on there, and we're gonna hope for the best. 